Um, we just finished our match. We're now 3-0 and in our league. But we want to talk a little bit about some of the spoilers that came out. Just for a second, not anything super big. But I really wanted to point out that the new lands coming out, they're finishing the cycle of generic two-colored uncommon into the battlefield lands. Uh, they don't have any abilities, they're just two-color lands, which I think is a really good balance, because you don't have to worry about, like, if you're in a set where life gain effects make a big difference, like, you know, uh, in Battle for Zendikar, uh, the life gain effects mattered quite a bit. There were a lot of cards that really picked up value from that. And having them be generic means you don't have to worry about uh, the little nuances that have to do with that. Maybe a little bit of life gain makes the control decks too good in some sets of that stuff. And you can always just add in specific set lands if you need to. But they're at Uncommon, which is a nice place for them because most sets don't need common mana fixing like this, but every once in a while you do. Think Ravnica Lock. Um, so that's pretty cool. And for the actual Shadows Inner Innerstrad set, Shadows Over Innerstrad, right, the set coming out, this means that the enemy colors will be slightly better um, than the ally colors, and they're probably actually supported as well. We see the enemy colors supported last time. In this block, and I expect him to be supported this time. Well, girlfriend's too tired, so we should do another one after you talk about this. Oh, well, now, now, uh, <laughs> the girlfriend she, she was like, I want to hang out. And she's like, I'm so sleepy. So. Right. Uh, one of the cards that just got released that I thought was really cool. I really dig the art on a pious elf angel, which is two and a white for a 2 2 human cleric. And whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield, you gain one. And you can pay two, tap it, sack any other permanent, transform it, and it becomes a 2 4. And whenever. Wayward Disciple, or another creature you control dies, drain one. So the first part to this is, this is a good card on both sides for limited. There's actually some moderate amount of constructed playability in it as well. Uh, if there's some sort of tokens deck in standard, it will care quite a bit for this card. Uh, the sacrificing a permanent has multiple functions. If you're playing a token deck, your card's not very valuable. But let's say that you're playing limited and you need to get Delirium, and you don't have a land in your graveyard. He can sacrifice a land. He can sacrifice an artifact. He can sacrifice an enchantment. He has a very strong effect. Being able to sacrifice any other permanent is a pretty unusual effect at Uncommon. You usually see that basically at Rare. And that is another permanent just to enable Delirium. And then the other side, obviously, you know, a 2-4 is pretty solid. Um, if you got value off the Delirium or whatever the other reason is, like, you have a really big drain card. Like, you don't only really see cards that beefy that drain. That's, like, really hard to remove. Like, one of the things that's nicer, I guess, about uh, the 1-1 one, one drain cards, which is what you normally see, like a Blood yeah, Artist or something. Blood Artist, yeah. Is, is if you have an answer, like, it's not bad, because they're not blocking with it or attacking with it. You don't get to interact with it. But as a 2-4, I mean, maybe they'll block with their 2-4, but if you're in a position where you don't have to block, you're just gonna lose to the drain in some situations. And I mean, 4 toughness is the point at which most red removal doesn't work, and um, most black sweepers don't work. And most zombies will get blocked by it all day long, so yeah, yeah, that's I mean, pretty good. If you feel comfortable yeah, blocking, then you can too. So I think that's a pretty cool card. This may or may not. I don't think it's good enough to see play in Modern Soul Sisters, but people have been talking about it being slightly synergistic or maybe seeing some sort of weird fusion between Soul Sisters and token-based themes. Like, this could fit in a black-white deck, not because it's black-white, but because the front half is nice with gaining the life on the front end, and buying you the time, but more importantly, once it flips over, you can turn those tokens into more drains. It could be in Collected Company, too, if they want to build this dumb combo in there. It, it, it could. I don't think it's good enough for Modern, but it is a card to keep your eye on, and it, it could happen. And, and I like that it's an Uncommon, so it's not going to be a lot of money. I like that it's an Uncommon, so I don't have to see a bunch of them in Standard, or in Limited. Like, that card's brutal. Anytime someone has two of these out, like, you're just, you're just so sad. Like, they're going to gain, like, six life, and then flip two of them, and then you, every time you attack, you're draining two, and they have a couple two-fours sitting around, and you're just like, no. Um, well, talking, so so it's it's only it or a creature they control, so it's not your creature's dying. Oh. It. So oh, it's that's, not that great. Oh, never mind. That's way bad, way worse. Oh, that's 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 reasonable for an uncommon. That's reasonable for a two-four. Never mind. I have greatly overestimated this greatly card. Greatly oversold this card. Yeah, no, I thought it was your creature's. Okay, well... My opponent's creatures, then it's yeah. It's whoever it controls it. So so then never mind. I don't think this has any significant standard playability. I it think will it's, be fun to draft. In limited, it still stands out because just the front half of the card is good enough to play. Transforming 
for Delirium is strong enough to be good, and the back half is, um, it also makes it hard to attack in a different way. It just means that your trades get better. Not quite as good as before. All right. But we're not really going to go through the rest of these. We talked a little bit uh, about most of these other cards the other day. We went through most of them. And we'll be doing a full review later on down the road. I just wanted to throw a little bit in there, especially on the lands. Like, knowing that the two colors are going to be playing well together, the enemy colors. Like, I don't see any multicolor cards so far, but I expect some at Uncommon. And we maybe get some... Maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe we get a set of Uncommons that have a madness cost that's a different color as the casting cost, like we saw with Flashback or something of that nature. But, um, yeah. All right, guys. Mobius pick up. Oh.